Today we'll be covering Quiver's time series functionality and its ability to calculate KPIs based on data. We'll use publicly available climate data from across the United States and try to determine which region of the country has had the most temperate climate over the last 20 years. To do this, we'll calculate the standard deviation of temperature over time in different regions using Quiver's transformation tools. Let's get started. In our current setup, we have a time series data set representing climate data from each of the climate divisions defined by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This includes temperature, precipitation, and drought risk data spanning more than 100 years. To start, let's add climate time series objects to a new quiver analysis. We built these objects beforehand using our climate data set. You can see that this object type has an icon next to it indicating that it contains time-dependent properties. We'll add it to Quiver. Here we can see all the time series we have available. They are broken down by state, division within a state, and the measurement they represent. For our purposes today, we're only concerned with average temperature, so let's filter out objects with other measurements. To do that, we'll click Objects, then Filter Object Set, then add a filter where the element name is Average Temperature. This shows that we now have a few hundred time series remaining. Let's get a sense for what these look like. To view a subset of them, click Time Series, then Group Time Series Plot. In the right configuration panel, choose the correct time series column. We'll also change the number of series to show up to 10, plot them in different colors, and show the division name for each. We're now seeing a sample of the temperature data sets. We can see that they are cyclic, rising and falling each year, which makes sense for temperature data. This is showing the full data set, which spans more than 100 years. However, we're only interested in the last 20 years, so let's crop our view. We'll configure our graph and click on Default Shared Time Axis, which defines the time range that we see in the graph. If we add it to our canvas, we can easily adjust the date range. We now see a more detailed view of the sample 10 time series shown here. Now let's calculate how temperate each division is. We'll do this by calculating the standard deviation of mean temperature values for each division over the last 20 years. To start, let's create a transform table for the temperature time series objects. We'll now see a list of all relevant objects to which we can apply transformations. First, we'll click the data to only look at the last 20 years. Click Add Transformation. Then under Time Series, find the Time Slice Transformation option. This will keep only the data found within a certain time interval. Give the output column a name. Select the original time series data. And choose the interval we define in the graph above. We can also define a different time range by creating a new parameter. We can now see a new column in the table showing previews of the clipped data. Next, we'll add the standard deviation transformation. This is found as a time series numeric aggregation. Give the new output column a name, then select the new time series column we just created. And last, choose standard deviation as the aggregation type. This calculates the standard deviation of mean temperature for each division over the last 20 years. Let's clean this up a bit since there is a lot of information that we don't need. We'll hide and delete unnecessary columns. Lastly, we can sort the divisions by standard deviation in ascending order to find those with the smallest temperature swings throughout the year. We can see that parts of Florida are the most temperate in our data set, while California and the Pacific Northwest also have moderate temperature swings. But what if we only wanted to look at certain states, maybe just in California? All we'd have to do is add an additional filter at the start of our analysis. 
return to the object filter and add an additional criteria for California. The analysis is now automatically updated. We can see new graphs of the time series data and our transformations only include California divisions. There is much more we could do using Quiver, so I encourage you to explore and find out how it can help you learn from your time series data at scale.